Picture this. April 13th, 2024, Iranian drones swarm toward Israel in waves. Two American F-15E Strike Eagles, the Eagle II's direct predecessor, obliterate over 70 hostile drones in a single night. Not with stealth, not with invisibility, but with raw firepower, twin crew coordination, and a weapons loadout that would make an armory jealous. Now imagine that same platform rebuilt from the ground up with 21st century tech, carrying enough missiles to arm three F-35s and flying twice as far. Meet the F-15 EX Eagle II, the Air Force's deliberate choice to build the most lethal non-stealth fighter on Earth. Here's what we're diving into today. Why the Pentagon is spending over $3 billion on a fighter that radar can actually see. How Boeing transformed a Cold War icon into a digital weapons truck and why Oregon's Air National Guard just bet their entire air defense mission on this controversial platform. The F-15EX represents a calculated gamble. While China and Russia pour resources into stealth fighters, America is mass producing a jet that lights up enemy radar screens like a Christmas tree. But here's the kicker. That's exactly the point. The Eagle II isn't trying to sneak past defenses. It's designed to overwhelm them with what the Air Force calls affordable mass. Boeing's ramping up to build two aircraft per month by 2026. The Oregon Guard declared initial operational capability in July 2024. And with 104 jets now on order, 18 funded in fiscal year 2025 alone, this program is accelerating, not slowing down. So let's tear apart America's most heavily armed fighter and find out why the Air Force thinks visible might actually be invisible. Forget everything you know about the original Eagle. The F-15EX shares about 70% of its parts with legacy F-15s, but that remaining 30% transforms everything. Start with the fly-by-wire system. Think of it like switching from manual steering in your grandfather's truck to a Tesla's computer control precision. Every control input gets filtered through flight computers that prevent over-G maneuvers while maximizing performance. Pilots can yank that stick as hard as they want. The jet won't rip itself apart. The cockpit, gone are the Vietnam-era dials. Each crew member gets a 10 by 19 inch touchscreen, basically an iPad Pro on steroids. The weapon systems officer in the back seat can manage targeting, electronic warfare, sensor fusion, and potentially even control loyal wingman drones, all from one interface. The ANAPG-82 active electronically scanned array radar is like having thousands of mini radars working in concert. It can track multiple bandits while simultaneously jamming enemy sensors and guiding missiles. Range? Classified, but pilots report seeing targets way before they see us. Add the Legion Pod's infrared search and track system. Think thermal vision that spots jet engines from over 50 miles away. And you've got redundant detection methods. If enemies jam your radar, switch to heat-seeking mode. Now the fun part, weapons. 23 hardpoints, 29,500 pounds of ordnance. That's 12 to 16, aim 120 AMRAMs for beyond visual range kills, plus aim 9X Sidewinders for dogfights. Need to hit ground targets? Load up JDAMs, small diameter bombs, or JASM cruise missiles. Boeing's even tested configurations for the AGM-183 ARRW hypersonic missile. One Eagle II could theoretically carry weapons that cost more than the jet itself. The ANALQ-250 Eagle Passive Active Warning. Survivability System, or EPAWS for short, turns the jet into an electronic warfare platform. It doesn't just detect threats, it actively jams enemy radars, spoofs missile guidance, and creates false targets. Imagine a disco ball, but instead of light, it's reflecting and distorting radar waves in controlled chaos. But wait, doesn't all this weight slow it down? The original F-15 emerged from America's Vietnam nightmare. MiG-21s were shooting down F-4 Phantoms, the Air Force demanded a pure air superiority fighter. No compromises. McDonnell Douglas delivered a twin engine monster that could climb to 30,000 feet in 60 seconds. For five decades, the Eagle evolved. The F-15C became the ultimate dogfighter. The F-15E Strike Eagle added ground attack. Then came the international variants that changed everything. In 2013, Saudi Arabia wanted F-15s with modern tech but couldn't get F-22s. Boeing created the F-15SA, Advanced Eagle, with a 20,000-hour airframe, digital flight controls, and massive displays. Qatar followed with the F-15QA, pushing capabilities even further. Meanwhile, back home, disaster struck. The Air Force planned for 381 F-22 Raptors, 
Congress approved 187. Suddenly, America faced a fighter gap. F-15Cs were literally falling apart, longer runs cracking, structures failing. In 2018, Pentagon analysts ran the numbers. Building more F-35s would cost 80 million per jet minimum, but Boeing's active F-15 production line for international customers offered economies of scale. The math was compelling. Leverage existing infrastructure, reduce training costs, utilize current weapon stocks. The Air Force initially wanted single-seat F-15CX variants. Boeing convinced them otherwise. Only twin-seaters remained in production. That second seat became a feature, not a bug. On February 2, 2021, the first F-15EX took flight. Two months later, it got its official name, Eagle II. The transformation is staggering. Original F-15Cs had 8,000-hour lifespans. The EX boasts 20,000. Mechanical controls became digital. Radar warning receivers evolved into offensive jamming systems. The weapons load double. But here's the strategic brilliance. Existing F-15 squadrons can transition in weeks, not years. Same simulators work. Same maintenance procedures apply. Pilots describe it like upgrading from a flip phone to a smartphone. Familiar interface, exponentially more capability. So how does this digital sledgehammer actually fight? July 16, 2025, an F-15EX touches down at Kadena Air Base, Japan. Message to Beijing, America's missile trucks are moving west. Here's the nightmare scenario keeping Chinese planners awake. Four F-15EXs launching from Kadena, each carrying 12 AMRAMs. That's 48 missiles inbound before enemy fighters even reach cruise altitude. The Eagles don't need to penetrate Chinese airspace. They're lobbing missiles from 200 miles out. But the real magic happens in mixed formations. F-35 sneak forward, invisible, painting targets with their sensors. They data link target coordinates to F-15 EXs, loitering safely outside threat rings. The Eagles unleash their massive magazines while the F-35s remain undetected. Military planners call this quarterback and receiver. Shift to Homeland Defense. Oregon's 142nd wing maintains 24-7 alert. Unknown aircraft enters American airspace, an F-15EX launches, races out at Mach 2.5, and intercepts in minutes. Those conformal fuel tanks provide 1,100-mile range, enough to reach threats far offshore without tanker support. During Northern Edge 2021, F-15EXs demonstrated something unexpected, battle management. That second seat became a command center, the weapon systems officer coordinated multiple aircraft, managed sensor feeds, and directed autonomous systems, essentially becoming an airborne tactical operations center. Remember those Iranian drones from our opening? The Eagle II's dual crew setup excels here. Pilot flies and evades. Wizzo manages sensors, prioritizes targets, and rapidly engages multiple threats. Against drone swarms, it's like having a flying phalanx system. Boeing's testing takes this further. The F-15EX could control collaborative combat aircraft, loyal wingman drones. Imagine one crewed Eagle, two commanding four unmanned jets, multiplying firepower while minimizing risk. President Trump announced in April 2025 that Michigan's Selfridge Base will receive 21 Eagle IIs, replacing A-10 Warthogs. The economic impact? $850 million and 5,000 jobs. But strategically, it positions high-speed interceptors on the Great Lakes, covering approaches from the Arctic. Here's what commanders love, readiness. The Government Accountability Office reports an 83% mission capability rate for F-15EXs. Compare that to the F-35's 67% across all variants. When you need jets airborne now, not tomorrow, reliability matters. But not everyone's convinced this is money well spent. Why are we buying non-stealth fighters in 2025? That's the question echoing through Pentagon hallways. Critics argue the F-15EX is a flying anachronism, vulnerable to modern surface-to-air missiles and outclassed by Chinese J-20s or Russian Su-57s. Here's the uncomfortable truth. Russian S-400 systems can theoretically detect an F-15EX from over 200 miles away. In contested airspace, that's a death sentence. The Eagle II's radar cross-section is roughly 40 times larger than an F-35's. But defenders fire back with economics. F-15EX costs $27,000 per flight hour. The F-35, 35 to 42,000 depending on variant, over a 20,000 hour lifespan. That's hundreds of millions saved per aircraft. There's also industrial base reality. 
Lockheed Martin can't instantly double F-35 production. Boeing's St. Louis plant is warm, workers are trained, and the supply chain exists. It's build eagles now or accept a fighter shortfall. The classified debate centers on kill chains. Stealth believers argue invisibility enables first shot advantage, but F-15EX advocates counter that modern sensors are defeating stealth anyway. So maximize weapons and sensors instead of hiding. Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Garrison from Eglin's test squadron puts it bluntly, stealth is one tool, electronic warfare is another, speed and payload are others. The EX gives commanders options. Here's the elephant in the room, next generation air dominance. The sixth generation fighter program is consuming massive funding. Some insiders whisper the F-15 EX is a stopgap, buying time until NGAD arrives in the 2030s. International reactions are mixed. Israel ordered 25 F-15IA variants, essentially their version of the EX. Poland and Indonesia are interested, but notice who's not buying? Nations facing China directly prefer F-35s. The pilot transition revealed unexpected challenges. Younger aviators trained on digital systems adapted quickly. Veterans with thousands of hours on mechanical F-15s struggled with fly-by-wire's different feel. The jet flies differently computer smooth rather than mechanical direct. Supply chains remain vulnerable. That December 2023 delivery delay to Eglin, semiconductor shortages. The same chips powering EPAWS also go into civilian electronics. When Taiwan sneezes, F-15 EX production catches cold. Yet the program marches forward. Why? Here's the bottom line on America's non-stealth sledgehammer. The F-15 EX Eagle II isn't trying to win a beauty contest against the F-35. It's solving a different problem entirely. Think of modern air warfare like a boxing match. The F-35 is your nimble welterweight, dodging, weaving, landing precise strikes. The F-15 EX is your heavyweight, absorbing hits while delivering knockout punches. You need both to win the fight. The numbers tell the story. 104 jets on order, 83% readiness rates, 29,000 pound payload capacity, 20,000 hour airframe life. This isn't experimental, it's operational. Russia's struggling to build 50 Su-57s. China's J-20 production remains opaque, but likely under 200 total. Meanwhile, America's cranking out Eagle Twos at two per month while simultaneously producing F-35s. It's industrial capacity as deterrence. The open architecture matters most. Today's F-15 EX carries AMRAMs and JDAM. Tomorrow's could wield hypersonic missiles, directed energy weapons, or swarms of autonomous munitions. The airframe is just a truck. The weapons are what evolve. Strategic ambiguity has value. Enemies must plan for multiple threats. Stealth fighters that appear from nowhere. Missile trucks that saturate defenses. Electronic warfare that blinds sensors. The F-15 EX adds complexity to adversary planning. So here's the question keeping defense planners debating. In a world where satellites can track stealth fighters and hypersonic missiles outrun everything, does invisibility matter more than firepower? Or has the F-15EX figured out that sometimes the best defense is carrying enough offense to make enemies think twice? Drop your thoughts below. Is the Eagle II a brilliant adaptation or an expensive anachronism?